Welcome to Flow State, a podcast designed to help you focus. And I'm your host, Bobby Light, here to provide the soundtrack to your work. You're listening to the talk only version of Flow State. In this version, I've removed the music so you can re-listen to or share a specific topic I've discussed. Eventually, I may even expand on the topics with longer talk-only episodes, discussing deep work, neurology, peak performance, and of course, the science of flow. Enjoy! be honest, the last talk break I recorded felt forced. I felt like I was repeating myself. I felt as if I had said everything I needed to say, and I was just becoming a broken record, repeating the same message over and over. I think I just needed a break. But since taking that break, I'm not afraid to admit that it's been a struggle to get back to talking and recording. I've faced a lot of self-doubt and internal resistance. Being in the middle of this struggle has been hard, but to struggle is a beautiful thing. To struggle is a human experience that we should embrace because without struggle, there is no flow by definition. Remember, flow state is a four-stage cycle that goes from struggle, release, flow, to rest. I'm reminded of the very first episode of Flow State in which I share Stephen Kotler's description of the struggle phase in the book The Rise of Superman. Struggle is a loading phase. We are overloading the brain with information. Our problems seem unsolvable our effort unsustainable, and the whole situation feels as far from flow as one could get. To move through struggle takes a leap of faith that the effort will really result in skill acquisition. By definition, this demands a growth mindset. Yes, I agree. Getting back to recording these talk breaks feels as far from flow as I can get. But as he mentions, to move through this struggle takes a leap of faith. And so that's what I'm doing here, pushing through the struggle and sharing that struggle with you, because maybe it'll help those of you that are struggling with something as well. We can all remember to embrace struggle, a necessary process for flow, learning, and skill acquisition. Here, I share an excerpt from the book Deep Work by Cal Newport on the science behind struggle. Skills, be they intellectual or physical, eventually reduce down to brain circuits. You get better at a skill as you develop more myelin around the relevant neurons, allowing the corresponding circuit to fire more effortlessly and effectively. This understanding provides a neurological foundation for why deliberate practice works. By focusing intensely on a specific skill, you're forcing the specific relevant circuit to fire again and again, in isolation, effectively cementing the skill. This is why it's so important to focus intensely on the task at hand while avoiding distraction, because this is the only way to isolate the relevant neural circuit enough to trigger useful myelination. There it is, the neurological science explaining the importance of struggle and focused practice. This also makes it clear that performing a task in a state of low concentration maybe while checking email or scrolling Twitter, means you're firing too many circuits at the same time to effectively cement one of them with enough myelin. 
we effectively wire our brains to be good at nothing. So I remind you, just as I remind myself, to embrace struggle and focus intensely on one thing, on the circuits you want your brain to fire faster and more effortlessly. By focusing intensely and allowing yourself to struggle, you help your brain cement the relevant circuitry for that skill. I realize now that by not writing, recording, and releasing an episode in which I talk, I have not allowed myself to struggle. I've instead cut myself off from the full experience of struggling with this art. I was also allowing perfectionism and fear to hold me back. As they say, perfect is the enemy of the good. The Beatles and their early years as a band is a great example of intense focus, struggle, and avoiding perfectionism. Before the fame, they performed in various clubs in Hamburg, Germany. Conditions were grueling. They often played for hours on end sometimes up to eight hours a day and seven days a week to entertain demanding club goers. I hate to ruin the romanticism of this story with science, but I'm going to. Just imagine the brain circuitry these experiences cemented. Not only did they repeatedly play their individual instruments, but the demanding circumstances of playing to a live crowd meant intense focus. This combination of intense focus and repeated firing of the relevant neurons, well, let's just say those neurons were probably very well myelinated. Yes, what a romantic story of neural pathways. You know, I'm sure many of those performances were far from perfect, but they were good enough. And stack enough good enough performances together and you're left with one of the most influential bands in the history of music. Thanks for listening today. I hope you learned or even relearned something valuable. Until next time, keep on flowing. I gotta admit, it feels great to say that again.